Hello, my name is Nicole Nolan and I'm a policy analyst in FDA's Office of Food Defense Communications and Emergency Response. I'm delighted to have this opportunity to review FDA's reportable food registry requirements with you today. On September 27, 2007, President George W. Bush signed into law the Food and Drug Administration Amendments Act of 2007. The law amended the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act by creating a new Section 417, entitled the Reportable Food Registry, which required FDA to establish an electronic portal by which instances of reportable food may be submitted. The congressionally identified purpose of the Reportable Food Registry is to provide a reliable mechanism to track patterns of adulteration in food in order to support efforts by FDA to target limited inspection resources to protect public health. As of September 8, 2009, when the electronic portal opened, industry is required to file a report through the portal when there is a reasonable probability that the use of or exposure to an article of food will cause serious adverse health consequences or death to humans or animals. Once a report is submitted to FDA via the portal, the system automatically provides the submitter with an FDA-issued unique identification number. What foods are covered by the Reportable Food Registry? The RFR applies to all FDA-regulated products except dietary supplements and infant formula because they are subject to other sections of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. Examples of FDA-regulated foods are beverages, including bottled water and alcohol, fruits and vegetables, fish and seafood, dairy products and shell eggs, raw agricultural commodities for use as food, canned and frozen foods, bakery goods, snack foods and candy, and animal feeds and pet food. I'd like to point out that the RFR does not apply to products regulated exclusively by the USDA, such as meat, poultry, and certain egg products. Who is required to use the Reportable Food Registry? Food facilities that manufacture, process, pack, or hold food for animal or human consumption in the United States are required to register with FDA under Section 415A of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act which I will refer to for the remainder of this presentation as the Act. All registered food facilities, except those producing dietary supplements or infant formula, are required to use the RFR if they determine that they have a reportable food. What exactly is a reportable food? A reportable food is an article of food other than dietary supplements or infant formula for which there is a reasonable probability that the use of or exposure to such article of food will cause serious adverse health consequences or death to humans or animals. FDA interprets the definition of a reportable food to include those foods that would meet the definition of a class one recall situation, meaning that a, there is a reasonable probability that the use of or exposure to a violative product will cause serious adverse health consequences or death. Examples of Class I recall situations are provided in FDA's RFR guidance document. There are two types of submissions, mandatory for industry and voluntary for government public health officials. For mandatory submissions, a responsible party must submit a report to FDA regarding instances of reportable food. A responsible party is defined as the person who submits the registration information to FDA for a food facility that manufactures, processes, packs, or holds food for human or animal consumption in the United States under Section 415A of the Act. Failure to comply is a prohibited act under the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act and subject to penalties. Government public health officials may voluntarily use the Reportable Food electronic portal to report information that may come in to them about reportable foods. However, they should not file a report on any firm's behalf. If a government public health official identifies a reportable food as part of inspection or regulatory activities, he or she can inform the facility that the firm may be required to submit a reportable food report. The law required FDA to establish an electronic portal to receive reportable food submissions and to promptly review the information submitted. 
An FDA risk control review team was set up to do a prompt review of every reportable food report submitted in order to determine whether the situation meets the definition of a reportable food. Reportable food submissions meeting the definition are entered into the registry. In May 2010, the Department of Health and Human Services, of which FDA is a component, launched a new user-friendly electronic portal called the Safety Reporting Portal. The Safety Reporting Portal is a gateway for industry to report not only reportable foods, but also adverse events involving pet foods and pet treats, as well as animal drugs. The Safety Reporting Portal provides more user-friendly conveniences that reporters to the RFR did not have with the original reportable food portal. If a submitter establishes a free account, there are several benefits. Any new reports are pre-populated with the submitter's contact information. Amended reports are pre-populated with all the information from the original submission. Both completed and partial reports are saved to be consulted, amended, or added to as necessary. And submitters can see a list of all reports they have submitted in the past. If a responsible party chooses to report as a guest user, the report cannot be saved and any previous submissions cannot be viewed. A reportable food must be reported no later than 24 hours after a responsible party determines that an article of food is a reportable food. The report must be submitted through the electronic portal. Information about a reportable food submitted to the FDA by other means does not fulfill the RFR reporting requirements. The responsible party must investigate the cause of the adulteration if the reportable food originated with the responsible party and the responsible party must submit certain data elements in the initial report and provide supplemental reports if additional information or corrections are needed. Here is a very important point. A responsible party is not required to report if the adulteration originated with the responsible party and the responsible party detected the adulteration prior to any transfer to another person of such article of food and the responsible party corrected such adulteration or destroyed or caused the destruction of such article of food. A transfer to another person occurs when the responsible party releases the food to another person. Person is defined in Section 201E of the Act as including individuals, partnerships, corporations, and associations. Currently, FDA does not consider an intercompany transfer in a vertically integrated company to be a transfer to another person, where the company maintains continuous possession of the article of food. For example, if company A owns a processing plant, warehouse facility, and distribution facility, the intercompany transfer from the processing plant to the warehouse facility and or the warehouse facility to the distribution facility would not be considered a transfer to another person. After a responsible party submits a reportable food report through the portal and consults with FDA, the responsible party may be asked to notify the immediate previous source and immediate subsequent recipients of the article of food. The responsible party must also maintain records related to each report received, notifications made, and the report submitted to FDA for two years. The data elements required for the mandatory industry reports include the FDA food facility registration number, the date the food was determined to be reportable, a description of the food, including quantity or amount, the extent and nature of the adulteration, results of the responsible party's investigation of the cause of the adulteration, and disposition of the article of food, product information, typically found on packaging sufficient to identify the food, and contact information for the responsible party, in addition to the contact information for the parties directly linked in the supply chain. Information not immediately available for the initial report can be supplied in supplemental reports. In January 2011, FDA published the first annual RFR report that consisted of data from the portal's opening on September 8, 2009 through September 7, 2010. Now I would like to share some of the key findings with you. Since the portal opened on September 8, 2009, we have received both domestic and international reports. 
and we have received three reports from U.S. state public health agencies. We also receive questions from industry via the RFR help desks. There are two help desks established to provide support to industry as well as to public health officials. Questions on policy, procedure, and interpretation about the reportable food registry can be emailed to rfrsupport at fda.hhs.gov. IT technical and computer-related questions about the reportable food registry electronic portal can be submitted to support.srp at jbsinternational.com. Of the 2,240 RFR entries received in the RFR's first year of operation, the 229 primary RFR entries included 201 concerning human food, 13 concerning pet food, and 15 concerning animal feed. Undeclared allergens or intolerances were the second most frequent reason, 16 reports with nine being undeclared sulfites in dried fruits and vegetables. RFR-driven FDA activities include the development of guidance and publications. Because of reportable food submissions involving salmonella in nuts and nut products, FDA intends to include an annex on nuts in the guidance for industry currently under development on salmonella and low moisture foods. FDA is preparing a publication explaining FDA's sulfite regulation and labeling requirements as a result of reportable food data concerning imported dried fruits and vegetables containing undisclosed sulfites. In two cases, reportable food submissions triggered follow-up investigations by FDA, resulting in two firms being placed on import alert. FDA issued six import bulletins to increase surveillance by FDA investigators at ports of entry as a result of reportable food submissions. As a result of the RFR data, FDA issued four field assignments for increased inspection and sampling of certain imported and domestic products. The RFR has shown that it can help prevent foods likely to cause illness from reaching consumers before outbreaks or reactions to undeclared allergens or intolerances occur, and can help expedite the removal of foods likely to cause illness from commerce. Industry is increasingly detecting contamination incidents through their own testing. Access to this information through the RFR permits FDA to verify appropriate corrective measures have been taken. These reports are revealing new problems that industry can address by implementing additional preventative controls in consultation with the FDA. FDA will finalize the current draft RFR guidance after reviewing comments from industry. We are making international outreach a priority. Currently, approximately 167,000 domestic and 254,000 foreign facilities that manufacture, process, pack, or hold food for human and animal consumption in the United States have registered with the FDA. The requirement to submit reportable food reports applies to all of them. This video is intended to help registered facilities understand their reporting responsibilities to the RFR. Printed copies of the RFR at a glance one-page summary are now available in English, Chinese, French, and Spanish, and they can be ordered by the email address provided on the screen. All visiting international delegations will be given in an RFR presentation. All RFR resources listed here, including a link to the RFR electronic portal, are available on FDA's website at www.fda.gov slash reportable food registry. I want to thank you for your interest in the reportable food registry. Working together, we can protect public health.